Hey, welcome to the show. Um, here is the article that I will be trying to debunk uh, from a MMT standpoint. And this is 10 uh, hours ago from Connor O'Keefe, who, if I looked him up right, uh, is a, I'm not, I'm not sure a recent, but a, a graduate of Austrian economics, a master of that, apparently a PhD, also uh, has a degree in um, uh, video production, I believe. Uh, anyway. So uh, the article states says this has been a rough year for advocates of MMT. No, it hasn't. After nearly two years with all the budget deficits and money printing, it's not printing. MMT years could be could have wanted the de- the doctrines. Popularity seems to be to have faded now that we've well past the honeymoon phase. Let me see. There we go. Uh, da, da, da. 2022 has clearly demonstrated that creating a lot of new money and running massive government deficits does in fact have a cost. We should let this theory die before it causes any more destruction. Now, let's see. The only thing that... Well, so far, uh, they haven't mentioned anything about production yet, but let's, let's see, because a lot of stuff that they're saying so far has been wrong. Uh, MMT is school of thought, born and raised on the internet. Now, actually, is born and it was born from the mind of Warren Mosler, who used to be, a, who was a fund manager, who used to work uh, within savings and loans in Connecticut, and who successfully owned and operated his own bank, and who created this based on his experience from capital markets. Anyway. So the advocates argue that because U.S. government is a currency issue, we we can drop all the talk about finding money for government programs. All that is needed is the political will to fund things with newly printed money. And suddenly in early 2000, sorry, 2020, that political will appeared overnight at a a scale no one could ever imagine, even weeks before. Okay, so again, it hasn't said yet anything about supply chain because that's the most important part of the whole dynamic here is you have to have supply in order to be able to satisfy the demand. And demand needs to have cash flow in order to you know be supplied so they can actually purchase that those goods and services. Uh, the federal government embraced deficit spend uh, spending to prop up the economy amidst imposed lockdowns and trade restrictions. Actually, the Fed had done a deficit in the 90s, and when Clinton decided to uh, cut down uh, the national debt, which and here I keep saying that the that deficits are. No, sorry, not deficits. So national debt is money that's in everybody's pocket. In reality, it's just it's in a, uh, an account of how much money has been spent into the economy without being taxed out. So that so that is U.S. Treasury. That that is uh, I bonds, bonds, basically anything that is uh, in a savings account. Those sort of things, which didn't redeem a turnover every day, every month, and every year since the nineteen what seventies, seventy eighties, some other like anyway. So let's see, the government uh, embraced deficit spending to prop up, oh, actually one one final thing as far as Clinton, uh, when he did that, he put us in a recession because there was not enough money into, no, there was not enough money in the economy to keep uh, people from not losing jobs as such. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, so let's see, deficit, uh, uh, deficit spending to prop up the economy and missed imposing uh, imposed lockdowns and trade restrictions. Actually, the trade restrictions was, yeah, sanctions and other things like that, also preventing from countries to be able to easily co- uh, bring in any kind of supply. And they were also down too. So this is a, so this was a, basically a world shutdown plus sanctions, plus COVID uh, restrictions, you name it, and it was there. So it wasn't based on MMT or what MMT uh, is about. It was it was supply chain. It has been supply chain. It has been supply chain. It will be supply chain for every time uh, inventories of stores or retailers get down to the point where they have to put down like how much of one item you could take or purchase. Like 
I think Aldi's actually had a limit of, say, two chickens or something like that because they had an inventory, but they didn't have much of an inventory, just meaning that the inventories were coming back slowly but surely. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, now, 31 months later, the national debt has increased by almost $8 trillion. It's interesting because at one point in time, everybody kept saying $31 trillion, so now it's $8 trillion. Hmm. Uh, at the same time, the money supply as measured by M2, which is pretty much everything liquid, and I like anything that's easily put into cash, uh, grew by $6 trillion, an increase of nearly 40%. Uh, most critics of the free market, not so free, uh, would probably classify this as historic level of money printing. It's not printing money, unless it's for like uh, daily um, cash transactions. That's all the uh, printing money basically is as far as that part goes. Uh, debt as, unfor uh, as unfortunate, but be necessary response to unprecedented circumstances, but not advocates of MMT. This is what we, this would oh, wait. This is what they've been wanting all along. No. According to MMT, having uh, having concerns about the national debt is antiquated and childish. Actually, no, we haven't said one bit of that. Uh, we've said that it's a record of all monies that were uh, spent into the economy uh, that have not been taxed out, what I just said. In fact, they argued that the total national debt is nothing more than what I just said, pretty much, and the money of uh, how much dollars that are in the pockets of private citizens. Nope. A higher national debt is not a consequence of MMT. Uh, it's the entire point. Nope. The pandemic was, uh, in many ways, MMT's moment. Actually, no, the moment, the MMT moment will be is full employment, uh, Green New Deal fully implemented, uh, making energy costs, which is the biggest cost of consumers uh, pretty much every year, uh, be low enough to where inflation would be at a permanent, say, 2 with 3%, if that. Because uh, if you look at it, majority of the costs are energy costs. And if you go to renewable energy, that will help with cost. It may not totally eliminate it, but it will help with cost, and it will help cool the earth surface so, you know, we don't have as much surprising tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I forgot, I forgot where was that? <laughs> Predictably, the historic level of monetary inflation paired with the government imposing product, production, there we go, slow down. Uh, has resulted in levels of consumer price infl inflation not seen in 40 years. Well, because our production has been down for the last 40 years, which I'll get, in, uh, which I'll get to in the next segment. The rate appears to have peaked in June of 2022, with the price on average at 9.1 higher than the year prior. You can't really, you can't really, um, you know, Anyway, so let's see. Uh, your prior producer uh, price infl uh, inflation also peaked in June at 11.3, although most MMT advocates have been dismissive of inflation. That's not something that they would have said was impossible. Actually, we've never said inflation was was impossible. We, we actually said what could cause inflation. Uh, the problem for that for them is what they think needs to be done about it. Just as MMT sees the national debt as a measure of all dollars the government created and put into <clears throat> the economy, deficit is what puts money into people's pockets, not not, not national debt, that, that, those sort of things. That is just a record of, of money that has not been taxed out. Deficits get taxed out. Um, let's see, pockets that tax, uh, taxes are tools for government to take money back out of the economy if inflation gets too high. That's if there are too few, that, that's if there's too much money and too few goods, but with 95% uh, ninety five percent um, production of manufacturing goods and services. Not like the crap we have now. Anyway. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so economy inflation too high. Setting aside how economically flawed this characterization is, government follow the MMT playbook will run into pol uh, political problems at this point in the cycle. It is relatively easy to convince politicians and everyday people that the government's program they dream about can be funded by creating new money and the true cost of this method. 
actually know us not. Because of thinkers like the author of this and the institution that uh, this author uh, represents, they are on a fractional reserve banking mindset, meaning that uh, governments run as run like a household, and that's not that's not possible, especially with a sovereign currency country like this one, Japan, UK, Canada, places like that. Uh, the biggest problem. Uh, again, is the energy cost. Energy, which is because we are dependent on another country for our energy for our energy consumption. We were at one point in time a, a, a energy uh, independent, but because of policies like Trump's selling of reserves and Biden continuing that, uh our gas and oil prices have gone up because we are uh doing now we are doing more importing than we are doing exporting anyway so let's see during periods of oh wait i'm sorry uh that as an illusion that something can be uh had for nothing but tax but taxes are the opposite Everyone can see the line on their re receipt, the amount withheld on payday, and the checks they have uh, have to send to IRS each April. The economy pain is felt without any clear immediate benefit. Here's the problem. Every piece of policy I just mentioned earlier is all deflationary because it will put more money into people's pockets in order for that to be taxed out or or as I've come to kind of say, expiration dates for currency, like April 15th or other days, uh, corporations have to pay for pay for things, you know, stuff like that. In fact, um, back in, see, during this, during the post-Civil War, I believe they called uh, uh, tax day pretty much expiration date for your currency. They would go around and they would take uh, what little bit of money you had left as far as for taxation. They, that's what they would call the expiration date on your currency. So that's pretty much what it, what date your currency expires in regards to money in your account or what you owe as far as your your uh, taxable income. Anyway, so let's see the economy pain. Okay, so uh, during the periods of high inflation, there are, there is a general sense amongst everyday people that the same amount of money is isn't cutting it. Sure, the initial cause may be a higher money supply, but any given person will feel like possessing more money is a key to getting by. After all, prices keep going up. They're not going to react as well to argue, to the argument that Uncle Sam should confiscate even more of the dollars. If MMTers thought it was difficult to cultivate the political will to inflate uh, to inflate, they currently or clearly haven't been thinking further down the road. Interesting, interestingly, we're not hearing much about raising taxes from MMT advocates these days, or at least their claims have been amplified by Democrats and progressives as much as earlier arguments to print money or more money were, just as they have done with changing uh, we. Keynesianism for decades, politicians will, gra will grab any economic theory that justifies what they want and drop it when, it per when it's prescribed. Something they don't, and thank goodness for that, the last thing we need is more taxes. This year has demonstrated that printing vast quantities of money is costly, and the political will to even stick with MMT breaks down with the ongoing, with the going gets tough. <sighs> Let's see. We, in the next segment, I'll show you what the uh, what the uh, breakdown of manufacturing has been. But we haven't had a clear supply chain manufacturing here in the United States since the seventies, and even then, the in the seventies, the uh, the manufacturing the manufacturing industries uh, were breaking it down anyway. <clears throat> so. We've had a 40-year inflation come back to us because our our manufacturing sector has been lacking to the point where that's when it showed. Because majority of the manufacturing jobs or manufacturers 
and outsource them to other economies, which is helpful for them as far as business, but is detrimental to a lot of communities that used to have steel steel mills, uh, breweries, breweries, make beer basically, uh, steel uh, um, steel yards, lumber, stuff like that. Those industries are the ones that pretty much left the United States because it was cheaper for overhead over there. And if we brought those back here, then our supply chain will be again back to the point where we can actually become we can actually become buy from the USA again. Now, as far as MMT goes, as I said, Green New Deal, which would put in place solar and wind wind turbines and stuff like that to help generate enough electricity for people who are who maybe have gas stoves and other things who hadn't maybe had to purchase it or uh are charged it in their rent or any other kind of um uh, their own personal liabilities to pay that would that would help them save on the electricity um and also renewables in regards to just like infrastructure stuff like that and if you make those energy efficient and you make those uh put more evs on the road both truck and other types of motor vehicles then you would be saving on energy getting us off of uh the teat if you will of saudi arabia and other gas productive uh countries that would also make energy here much more affordable because there would be less demand meaning that they would then have to lay off a bunch of people but that's where the uh, the jobs program comes in because jobs guaranteed jobs program mmt mode uh backed would be there for anybody who wants a job and until jobs become more available in the private sector they would I suspect lift the minimum wage from seven twenty five to say twenty or however much it would take to keep uh, personal liabilities at bay until jobs opened up in the private sector more. Overall, MMT is a description of what the current economic system is. It allows you to also, if you know the fundamentals of it, also look at other countries and their import export rate, whether their inflation is due to those two things I just said, or if it's due to the fact that they may or may not have their own currency. Uh, if you're a currency user, then you're not in charge of monetary policy overall, I mean. You have to go to, say, any country that's involved in the EU. You have to go to the ECB and take out bonds, a loan on you know, different things in your country, or you go to the IMF with ECB's uh, help. Stuff like that. Um, countries that have funding exchange rates, that have... Um, uh, they don't have any outside currency debts. That's another thing that makes a currency uh, a a country unsolvent or insolvent, is if you owe others money that's not inside that's not in your own uh, currency, because depends on how, what kind of currency they have. If they have a floating exchange rate on theirs, that means that their money uh goes up faster than maybe your money so it takes more of your money to be able to pay for that which costs which basically means hyperinflation for you as far as i'm concerned i uh, see and, and especially if you're paid if you're paid to a currency like that then yes the value of your currency can either uh, go up or down any moment especially if you use that same paid currency within your own uh, uh for for a way of exchange for exchanging for all goods and services in your own country. That means that prices for your stuff goes up and down inside your country. So it's just better to to describe your prescribe yourself MMT or the principles of modern monetary theory. Anyway, so as per usual, um Austrian economics or uh economics, especially this place, 
knows nothing as far as a fiat currency. They always they always look at majority of them always look at uh that has not every policy that has nothing to do with anything regarding MMT. Majority of the time that prices go up is because production has gone down, uh, depending on the price and all that. Anyway, that's what I gotta say as far as that part goes. Be right back with another segment. Stay tuned. You're watching Debunking Mainstream Econ. <laughs> 